Good afternoon and welcome to The Rundown. I'm your host, Captivating Christian, and here are some of your top stories for today, the 12th of November. Arkansas police chief resigns after calling for Democrats to be executed. Chief Lang Holland of Marshall, Arkansas, advocated online that Democrats should be attacked summarily and executed. He resigned soon after his comments were made public. And former Louisville officer involved in Breonna Taylor's shooting faces a lawsuit for sexual assault. The CDC chief has lost his way during the COVID-19. Now, his agency is in the balance. Virginia's governor conditionally pardons a young black man with autism who was serving a 10-year sentence for a car crash. Here's what we know about the mega rallies planned in D.C. this weekend. Induction of Whitney Houston and Notorious B.I.G. into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame to air on HBO this weekend. This 12-year-old is set to become one of the youngest composers for the New York Philharmonic Orchestra. Let's get to the news. As the results of the presidential election unfolded last week and former Vice President Joseph R. Biden took the lead in the Electoral College, the police chief of Marshall, Arkansas, a town of roughly 1,300 people, which is north of Little Rock, shared his feelings of rage online. Will you and several hundreds more go with me to D.C. and fight our way into Congress and arrest every Democrat who has participated in this coup? Chief Lang Holland posted on Friday uh, on Polar, which is a right-wing messaging site. We may have to shoot and kill many of these communist Black Lives Matter and Antifa Democrat foot soldiers to accomplish this. Death to all Marxist Democrats. Take no prisoners and leave no survivors, Chief Holland added. Roughly a day later after the NBC affiliate in Little Rock reported on this post, Chief Holland was out of a job. His Polar account, which says he previously worked as a trainer in Iraq and Afghanistan, had since been privated, but not deleted. Quentin Forrester, a 26-year-old Arkansonian who runs the Ozark Coalition, which is an anti-racist watch group, and shares screenshots of Mr. Holland's Polar Post with the New York Times, said that he was alerted to the Post at 7 a.m. on Saturday. An hour later, he had taken screenshots of Mr. Holland's online statements on Polar that were then shared with the mayor's office in Marshall. By 3.20, the mayor's office released a statement saying that the chief, Holland, had resigned effective immediately. The mayor had summoned the police chief, Holland, to a meeting at the Marshall City Hall at about 1 p.m. on Saturday. He showed him the post. Mr. Holland declined to answer the mayor's questions and announced his decision to resign. The mayor said that Mr. Holland quickly turned in his car, badge, cell phone, and other items issued by the city, including a sawed-off shotgun. Mr. Holland carried his own sidearm on duty, which he retained. Mr. Holland's connections to the Arkansas Patriot, which he said was a local right-wing militia with ties to larger Proud Boy networks and political motivated violence. Members of the Arkansas Patriots have been showing up at protests with firearms. There are many claims 
that current and former members of law enforcement and the military are part of these groups. In June, The Root reported that former Louisville Metro Police Detective Brett Hankinson, one of the three officers who fatally shot Breonna Taylor and the only officer facing charges related to the shooting, essentially for the bullets that missed, was accused of sexual assault by two women who posted about their experiences on social media. On Tuesday, one of Hankinson's accusers filed a lawsuit against the ex-officer claiming he assaulted her in 2018 and that members of the police department knew about his conduct and did nothing about it. CNN reported that Margot Borders, the plaintiff in the lawsuit named Hankerson, in her suit as the sexual predator who used his police uniform and secondary nightclub employment as mechanisms to prey on innocent women who are two decades younger than him. Borders, who said she was 22 when she met Hankerson, according to NBC News, wrote in a June 4th Facebook post that she had gone to a bar with friends the night of the alleged assault. According to the lawsuit, plaintiff Margot Butters visited the Tin Ruth Bar in Kentucky to meet some friends back in 2018, where Hankinson was working as a security guard. Borders and Hankinson had met in 2017 and had a mutual friend. Hankinson frequently messaged Borders on Snapchat and reached out to her when he was having problems with his girlfriend, according to the lawsuit. Borders was intoxicated that night, and when the time came to leave the bar, she was about to call for an Uber, but Hankinson insisted that he drive her home. According to the Washington Post, the lawsuit also claims that Borders was left in physical and emotional pain and that her sheets and mattress were soaked in blood after the attack. As we previously reported, the second woman, Emily Terry, posted her story being assaulted by Hankerson on Instagram the same day Border posted her story of assault on Facebook. According to NBC, Hankerson isn't the only one in Border's suit. The lawsuit also calls out the former police chief, Steve Comrad, and five other officers who claim they knew about Hankerson's behavior and did nothing to stop it. And be sure to join Jay Wilson, Rebel Son, the official King Pain, Conscious TV, and Captivating Christian this and every Thursday at 6.45 Central Standard Time, 7.45 Eastern Standard Time for the Gentleman's Panel. Well, we are not afraid to go there and discuss an array of topics. See you there. Dr. Robert Redfield closed his eyes in search for words to explain to Congress why his health agency he leads had softened on the coronavirus protections for slaughterhouse workers. The White House, meatpacking industry, and other federal agencies were not involved. The, dis the director for the Center for Disease Control and Prevention insisted during a September hearing 
However, none of that was true. Redfield was sitting in the White House when he instructed his staff to change a series of safety recommendations to suggest adding dozens of qualifiers such as if feasible and not required. He turned to a West Wing aide and told her the edits came directly from the Vice President Mike Pence, Chief of Staff. Smithfield's Foods, the Dakota, the South Dakota meatpacking plant under scrutiny, had seen the tougher recommendations. One of the first documents outlining the COVID-19 protections for the industry. The CDC emailed it the day before the edits were made. Federal agriculture and labor officials also weighed in. Redfield's actions in overruling the CDC scientists who had spent a week investigating and writing the original guidelines to fit a pattern defining his leadership during the COVID-19 crisis. He repeatedly allowed politics to undermine scientific best practices and then publicly denied it. The CDC started the COVID-19 crisis as the world's public health gold star standard, a beacon for other countries responding to their own outbreaks. Polls show more than 8 in 10 Americans trusted its coronavirus information early in the spring, before the states across the country began reopening. The agency earned that respect through decades of shielding its scientific independence from politics of Washington. But since then, the country's faith in the CDC coronavirus guidance has evaporated by double digits. President Donald Trump has undermined the agency by airing his own mistrust in it. The CDC scientists and staff have increasingly expressed their deep concerns over Radfield's leadership and the state of the agency. In some of the most troubling cases this year, Redfield pressured local health officials to grant favors to politicians and businesses. Records show that he has allowed political appointees outside of the agency to write and publish information on the CDC's website, sometimes over the objection of his top scientists and without technical review. Hours before the CDC was to release a school reopening guidelines in August, the White House revised the document's introduction, downplaying health concerns and encouraging schools to reopen, according to three health officials involved. The CDC's school safety experts did not even have time to read the whole document before it went online. Virginia's governor this week conditionally pardoned a young black man with autism who was serving 10 years in prison after being involved in two car crashes in 2019 that left two people seriously injured. Matthew Russian was on his way to pick up some pastries at a Virginia Beach Panera on January 4th, 2019 when he struck a moving vehicle in a parking lot and fled. Authorities say he then drove head on into oncoming traffic and struck another vehicle, leaving two people seriously injured, according to the Virginia Beach Commonwealth's Attorney's Office. The 22-year-old pled guilty to two counts of malicious wounding and one count of a hit-and-run personal injury. The prosecutor's office said that he was sentenced to 50 years in prison with a judge suspending 40 years from it 
prosecutors say. However, Russian's family, as well as members of the autism community, have been calling for his release, saying that authorities did not provide the accommodations or consider his communication access needs. This week, Virginia's Governor Ralph Northam reduced Russian's sentence, setting him on a clear path to be released by next spring. Hey, this is Captain Raiden Christian here to remind you to tune in to Politics and Wellness every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Politics and Wellness every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Several pro-Trump and white nationalist groups are stirring chatter on social media about the supposed rallies in D.C. this Saturday in an effort to further Trump's baseless claims about a stolen election. From their online promotions, the events are focused on protesting President-elect Joe Biden's victory falsely claiming that Trump's second term was stolen through fraudulent votes. Both Democratic and Republican elected officials in dozens of states have found no evidence of voter fraud or other irregularities that influence the outcome of the election. It is unclear how many people will actually turn up in D.C. for Saturday's rally, given that the protests associated with white nationalists have tended to end up a limp turnout in the city, dwarfing insides by the counter-protest. After announcing in January that Whitney Houston and Notorious B.I.G. are among the 2020 inductees into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, the foundation behind the exhibit soon had to swerve from its planned live induction ceremony this May in Cleveland due to the considerations of COVID-19. Luckily, however, for fans of the powerhouse singer and Big Papa rapper will still get a chance to watch the marking of their induction into the Museum of Musical Greats in a special production that will air on HBO this Saturday. According to Billboard, the pre-taped program will feature 10-minute packages that highlight each of this year's honorees among them grace moore is a young musician who is poised for greatness and achieved a huge milestone this week the seventh grader is one of the youngest composers to enter the new york philharmonic moore is enrolled in the organization's very young composers program designed to teach participants as young as eight years old how to create their own scores. The members of the program will also get to see their works performed by professional musicians in the orchestra. The, the student body of Poly Prep in Brooklyn congratulated their few students on its Twitter page to celebrate the high achievement. The hashtag Poe Prep is so proud of the 7th grader Grace Moore. In October, Moore was able to make her debut with the orchestra in a live performance she created for the program. The music organization shared a video of the performance featuring Moore in attendance to hear her music come to life on its Instagram page. Once again, thank you for watching CCN Midday News. Hope you enjoy. Please like, share, and subscribe. Also hit that notification button so you will never miss another news update. Have a great day. Peace.